the Virginia Department of Transportation is conducting the Riverside Drive Corridor Improvement Study in collaboration with the City of Danville and the West Piedmont Planning District Commission. This presentation explains why VDOT is studying Riverside Drive, what are the issues, and what are the recommendations. It touches briefly on how the recommendations would be funded and next steps. Why is VDOT studying Riverside Drive? This study is being funded by VDOT's STARS program. STARS stands for Strategically Targeted and Affordable Roadway Solutions. It's a program to identify critical roads across the state that have the most pressing safety or congestion issues. Once a corridor is identified, it is studied with the intent to identify innovative and cost-effective improvements that can move quickly into engineering and construction. VDOT identified the three-mile segment of Riverside Drive from just west of Piedmont Drive to Main Street as having critical safety and access spacing issues. VDOT coordinated with Danville City Council and City Council requested Riverside Drive be studied as part of the STARS program. Let's talk about those safety and access spacing issues. In six years, this three mile segment of Riverside Drive experienced 740 crashes. Five people were killed, almost one person every year that has died on this road. 316 crashes resulted in injury and 419 resulted in property damage. Traffic volumes on Riverside Drive are relatively low for a mostly six lane arterial roadway which means the crash rates on this road are very high. Another metric for measuring safety issues is called Potential for Safety Improvement, or PSI. It's a similar measure to the crash rate and it compares the actual crash rate to the crash rate that would be expected for any road with similar traffic volumes and geometric characteristics. Intersections and segments that have PSI have a higher than expected crash rate. And what you can see on this slide is that almost every single segment of the three mile Riverside Drive corridor has PSI, meaning it has a higher than expected crash rate. The lower the number in the flag, the higher the PSI, meaning the more severe the safety issues are. What makes this corridor unique is that it has a higher than expected crash rate for almost the entire three mile segment and Many of these locations have unusually higher than average crash rates. One of the biggest safety issues on Riverside Drive is that it lacks sidewalks and crosswalks. If you drive along Riverside Drive, you'll frequently see pedestrians walking along and trying to cross the road to the bus stops and other retail establishments. In the past six years, two pedestrians were killed trying to cross the street and two others were injured. Last year, VDOT analyzed crash data for the entire Commonwealth through the statewide pedestrian safety action plan and identified Riverside Drive as a pedestrian safety priority corridor. What we see from our analysis of crashes on Riverside Drive is that this road has high crash rates along the entire three mile segment. There are no sidewalks or crosswalks for pedestrians to walk along or cross the street safely, and multiple pedestrians have been killed or injured trying to cross the street. Some of the intersections with the highest crash rates include Old Riverside Drive, Mount Cross Road, and Westover Drive, and there are access spacing deficiencies which create a high number of conflict points and crash potential. What does that mean, access spacing deficiencies? Let's explain. At a typical four leg intersection, there are 32 conflict points. What is a conflict point? A conflict point is a location where the travel paths of two different vehicles may cross. The more conflict points you have, the higher the risk of a crash occurring. If you can reduce the number of conflict points, you reduce the potential for crashes to occur. How do you reduce the number of conflict points? You can do that by restricting certain turning movements. 
a directional median opening that prohibits left turns and through movements from side streets reduces the number of conflict points from 32 to 10, reducing the potential for crashes by almost 70%. And if you close off the median completely and make each side street a right in, right out entrance, you reduce the conflict points down to four. In order to limit the number of conflict points and crash potential, VDOT requires minimum spacing between different types of access points. For arterials like Riverside Drive, VDOT requires 305 feet between entrances and 1,050 feet, approximately one-fifth of a mile, between full direction median openings. Most of Riverside Drive does not meet VDOT's access spacing standards. The red shows places where access points are spaced too closely together. The middle line shows the access spacing for median openings, and the outer two lines show the spacing for driveways. If we look at this segment of Riverside Drive, which is just west of Audubon Drive, you can see that the median openings are spaced too closely together. VDOT requires a minimum of 1,050 feet, but the actual spacing is only 350 feet and 435 feet. Driveways should be spaced at least 305 feet apart, but most are less than 200 and some only 50 or 60 feet to the next driveway. Why is this a problem? Each median opening or driveway introduces conflict points where vehicles might stop or slow down, and this disrupts the flow of traffic and increases the potential for crashes to occur. The more closely spaced driveways are, the higher likelihood of crashes. You see this correlation in the crash data. The locations with the highest crash rates and the lowest PSI numbers are also the segments with the worst access spacing deficiencies, where you see the most red. This is notable in the eastern segment between Piney Forest Road and Locust Lane, and also in the western segment from Mount Cross Road to Westover Drive and over to Riverview Drive. To recap what the issues are, Riverside Drive has high crash rates along the entire three mile corridor. Pedestrians are being struck and killed or injured, and there are no sidewalks or crosswalks for them to safely cross the road. There are crash clusters at intersections that need to be addressed, and access spacing deficiencies create a high number of conflict points and crash potential. So what are the recommendations to address these issues? I'm going to briefly explain the most significant recommendations, and I encourage you to download and look closely at the display boards available on the city's website. These are draft concepts, and we want to hear your feedback. You can leave a comment or a question on the comment form on the city's website. Some of the recommendations you'll see on the display boards include installing sidewalks and crosswalks, consolidating and converting median openings, installing bus bays, realigning select off ramps, and other intersection improvements. To address pedestrian safety, we recommend installing sidewalks on both sides of Riverside Drive from Park Avenue all the way to Main Street, with the exception of the Central Boulevard interchange area where sidewalks would be provided on the north side of the road. We recommend installing crosswalks and pedestrian countdown signals at the signalized intersections. There aren't any traffic signals between Piney Forest Road and Audubon Drive, and this was where the two pedestrian fatalities occurred. So in that section, we recommend installing crosswalks with pedestrian hybrid beacons at Neal Court and at Camelot Court. Pedestrian hybrid beacons are signals like the ones shown in the bottom corner that stay off until a pedestrian pushes a button to turn the signal on, and it flashes yellow and then red to stop traffic. 
We also recommend improving signage to the Riverwalk Trail. To address the access spacing issues, the recommendations include consolidating several median openings and converting others to directional median openings. There are several locations where we are recommending a restricted crossing U-turn, also called an R-cut. This is a type of directional median opening, and the way it works is that a median barrier is placed in the middle of the intersection that allows vehicles on the main line, in this case vehicles on Riverside Drive, to turn left. The median barrier directs all side street movements to begin with a right turn. If you're on the side street and you want to turn left or go straight across, you turn right and make a U-turn at the next median opening. This configuration makes it safer for side street traffic because instead of having to find a gap in both directions, you only need to look for a gap in one direction at a time. It can be installed at both signalized and unsignalized locations. VDOT has implemented several R cuts across the state. In 2015, VDOT constructed an unsignalized R-cut on US-17 in Middlesex County. At this location, left turns are allowed from US-17, but side street traffic must turn right and proceed down to the next median opening to make a U-turn. In the two years preceding the R-cut, the crash rate was 2.09, that's crashes per million vehicles entering the intersection. And after the R-cut was installed, the crash rate dropped to 0.5, a 70% decrease. In addition to the safety benefits, R-cuts also decrease delays. Even though side street left turns and through movements must make two maneuvers, wait times still decrease. To improve safety and address the access spacing deficiencies on Riverside Drive, R cuts are recommended at several locations. At these locations, U turns would be allowed at downstream intersections for passenger cars, but truck U turns would be prohibited. You can view these images more closely in the display boards, and I'll briefly point them out now. The two intersections at Riverview Drive, Wild Wings Lane, and the Riverside Center entrance are currently signalized, and we are recommending these be converted to signalized R-cuts. We are recommending converting the signalized intersection at Old Riverside Drive to an R-cut, and an unsignalized R-cut at Commerce Street. We are recommending installing unsignalized R cuts at Meal Court and at the Camelot Court entrance, and closing the median openings at Cortland Street and the Camelot Court exit. We are also recommending an unsignalized R cut at the middle median opening between Audubon Drive and Arnett Boulevard, and closing the other two median openings. Again, the purpose of these recommendations is to improve safety and address the access spacing deficiencies. The draft recommendations also include installing bus bays and bus shelters at two bus stops, one at the Hardy's bus stop at the Westover Drive intersection and the other at the Biscuitville bus stop at the Audubon Drive intersection. The draft recommendations also include realigning two ramps. The southbound Piedmont Drive off-ramp would be realigned to intersect Riverside Drive at a 90 degree angle with a new stop sign. This would improve the spacing between the ramp and the Honda dealership entrance, which is currently very deficient. The southbound Central Boulevard off-ramp would also be realigned to intersect Riverside Drive at a 90 degree angle. The recommendation includes 
introducing a new traffic signal for the southbound off-ramp and westbound traffic to eliminate the downstream weaving conflict with vehicles trying to turn right on Mount Cross Road. The eastbound Riverside Drive approach would remain unsignalized. This recommendation also includes closing the entrance to the connector road to Tower Drive to eliminate the access spacing deficiency. Other intersection improvements that are recommended that you can view in the display boards include a new westbound right turn lane to Audubon Drive to address the existing safety issues, including those from parked vehicles backing out into the existing travel lanes, a new full length westbound right turn lane at Mount Cross Road, replacing the westbound right turn ramp at Westover Drive with a new turn lane that is closer to the intersection, and prohibiting left turns from Riverside Drive at Highland Court to address a rear end crash cluster at that location. How would the recommended projects be funded? There are a variety of funding programs that these projects could be eligible for, depending on different criteria. What are the next steps? You can download the display boards from the city's website and tell us your thoughts on the comment portal. You can contact David Cook, Ken Gilley, or Brian Dunavent for more information or to ask questions. Thank you for watching and we look forward to receiving your feedback.